So a quick case study. This is a, a little medical office building. It was about 350 tons, plus or minus. All, all three of them were the same size. This fabricator was selected by the owner via RFQ, so he was on board uh, early. Uh, the owner and the contractor were both interested in what we were doing, and they, we ended up working for the contractor as the engineer and hired the detailer ourselves. So we were, we were paid by the contractor, not the owner and not the fabricator. We finished CDs. We had the shop, the detail model available. Uh, I think we sent them the electronic files in whatever format, I think we, we picked a couple choices in case they wanted to put them in some estimating software for them to, to use. I think on this one, most everybody did it old school and used the 2D drawings to do their takeoffs. So here we are, five week turnaround for the fabrication package. Zero RFIs. There were no questions. On this job in particular, we didn't even know the fabricator was fabricating until, until Steele showed up at the job site. So we, at the end of five weeks, we handed him 2D paper drawings, however he wanted them. We handed him the electronic files for his CNC equipment, and the detailer worked that out with their guys. And then we never heard back from him. It all got erected. It went together fine. And as far as I know on this one, there were no fit-up issues in the field. Um, we had kind of finagled away to the mechanical units, you know, seemed to always be the hiccup in all these things, but we had finagled away to allow them to um, work around. As long as the unit was generally the right size, they were on a concrete pad up on the roof, that we could kind of deal with whatever chase openings they, they had to work around up on the roof. Another MOB, this was, uh, so that's pretty much design, bid, build. And that, that's how that one worked. This one started, a uh, contractor was on board early. It was a CM at risk. It was originally supposed to be a four-story, 80,000 square foot building. We got, well, 100% through CDs and probably 75 or 80% through DDs. And they had a budget problem. <laughs> so it went on hold for three months while they figured out what they were going to do. They lopped off one of the floors and on this one, because it was CM at risk, which I wasn't aware of at the time, contractors still wanted us to do the shop drawings the way we had done it on this first job, kind of as a design bid build. Because of the way things worked out, this was actually the first project that kind of got this far and before it ran into the budget problem. You know, the detailers are used to working for fabricators. Well, Welcome to my world, it's 90 days to 120 days before you get paid. And that was an eye opener for our detailer and I couldn't, I knew that, and I couldn't bring myself to say, well, we did it once, we're gonna get paid for it, but it's gonna be later. Can I get you to do it again for free until we get paid later? And he wasn't too interested in that and I wasn't surprised by that. So on this one, uh, we bid the construction documents, we sent them takeoffs from our BIM, you know, which had all this had all this miscellaneous stuff in it and all the hanging brick around the perimeter. They selected a fabricator. We immediately sat down with them, talked about their preferences, and in this one we had a six-week turnaround for them to have fabrication drawings. Again, no RFIs, no change orders, no nothing. Both of these guys, both of these fabricators were tickled to death. You know, not having to deal with RFIs. Well, actually, in this one in particular, the uh, fabricator decided to do his stairs in-house. They had, they had their own guy that um, does the detailing in-house. He called one day and said, I'm looking at the plan and I see 13 treads, and I'm looking at this section through the stair and it's got 14 treads. And of course, the stair is painted in a corner and it didn't fit. So I said, don't do anything for a minute. I'll get back to you. And then two days later, after wrestling with the architect, architect figured out where we could put the, the landing beam so that he could get his 14 treads in there. I called that guy back and I said, 15 foot, five and three quarters from grid line two. And he went on and went about his business. And I sat back and thought about it, about what that would have taken if we were in CDs and that went through the RFI process. It would have been 
weeks because I made the architect answer the question. It wasn't the contractor, it wasn't the fabricator, it wasn't the detailer. You know, I had enough leverage to, to, to get the architect to answer the question and move on. So that was, it was a design build slash design bid build. And that one was messy by, you know, uh, a, a building budget that kind of fell apart. And yet this process still works for that. This was a design build. Um, very, very aggressive schedule. The owner was saving something like, they were consolidating um, resources. And it was something like $100,000 a month they were saving on their monthly monthly expenses if, if this you know as soon as this building gets done and it's a it's a really sophisticated building and they can't even occupy it when they when they first move in they have to get FDA approval for whatever they're doing but nonetheless it was a really fast schedule something has pretty much never been done before the the freezer over here is or I'm sorry the freezer over here is is a box inside of a box and it was 50 feet wide by 200 feet long and 40 some odd feet clear and it was kept at minus 35 degrees so you can imagine it's got 200 million dollars worth of plas blood plasma in it so everything was redundant you know working with the freezer guy and everything you know trying to keep the schedule moving forward and not have things change as we were going forward was was a challenge so in this particular case, uh, Fabricator was brought on early as part of the design build, and we worked for the Fabricator. So on, I'm sorry, on the second one, we originally worked for the contractor, and then when it went to the three-story building, we actually worked for the Fabricator on that one. So on this one, we worked directly for the Fabricator uh, from the, from the get-go, uh, incorporating all their standards. They. Um, you know, they had weekly meetings with all the subs because things were changing so quickly and construction was going so quickly. Um, they did tell me that in all the meetings, they were never the one on the hot seat for not making the schedule. Everybody else was getting yelled at, but they weren't getting yelled at, that they were able to provide the steel when they needed it, when the job site needed it. It's really hard to gauge. I guess we could say there were no RFIs on the original package and there were probably no change orders on the original package, but you know, this thing was a, sort of a moving target and some things happened that you know, were, were legit that you know, people just, the mechanical guys in particular, just needed to have things done later that, that ultimately uh, ended up being change orders, but, but it's not the change order due to, I don't know, structural design thing, whatever. It would be fair to say they're, they're pretty much finished with this one now from, I guess I'll say from an erection standpoint and from how, where we saw the project, we thought it went really well. Um, I did do a post-mortem with these guys and there are some things that we could do to help their shop work faster. You know, it's the first time we had worked with this fabricator this way and getting their standards incorporated quickly enough and thoroughly enough um, was a challenge, um, but they didn't say thanks but no thanks. We're going to try and do this again on something else.